The next time I tell you, I might have to let you go, but I'm holding my
Everybody, what a great day I had yesterday riding this fine 750 Roadster Custom, the brother of this 850 Roadster Custom. Very similar oil tank in the frame efforts. And broken record, this thing runs perfect. This thing works perfect. This thing is such a pleasure to ride. It does everything just like you would expect it to. It is so simple, so easy, so light, so nimble, so secure, so smooth, isolastic, no vibrations. Does everything just like you want it done. All my bikes have new motors. Did them all five years ago, one three years ago. This one here, five years ago, I've had up to 6,000 all my bikes this year, several times. And I'm pleased to say they all work excellent. No knocking, no burning oil, no leaking, nothing falling off, everything working perfectly. So, let's start with the motor. This motor is a 750, pretty well stock, stock crank, stock rods, stock Norton pistons. The head is modified to a single squish combustion chamber. I have two single squish combustion chambers. I have done it three times for customers. That is a single squish combustion chamber looks like. You can see it in this picture. Two of my bikes like that, three customers. That's a Harley style D-shaped, designed by Porsche, single squish combustion chambers. That's what we're using in this bike here. Uh, Kibble White stainless standard size valves. Kibble White valve spring set. 30 millimeter ports. S just the port slightly cleaned up. I don't pour it out, I just clean them up. I don't hog them out. 30 millimeter carbs. Uh, the uh, rear intake oil past the cam and lifters instead of it being wasted peeing down to here which the factory has it so hundred percent of the oil that goes to the top end through here goes over the cam and lifters has a combat cam squish combustion chambers <clears throat> kind of a mild motor but goes just fine, thank you. Just enough to give it that little extra and make sure that it does move the way you would like it to. My Rams had Sunstall exhaust, which I did for 70 in 1974. I have two of these, one on uh, each of my customs and one left over from my stalker, the first one I did hanging over there. This is hooked up to a carbon fiber muffler, which I got from free for free from Charles at British. Look at the outlet on this baby, huge. This is the coolest sounding Norton I ever heard. Norton sound great with their pea shooters. This thing growls, growl, 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 growl. It is wicked. I love it. Stainless air cleaner all the way around, Colin Kelly. Oh, there's one of my oil filters, filtering the oil before it goes into the crankshaft. Now this engine also is breathing to the outside because it's in my oil tank in the frame. Breathing to the outside world here. So there's three baffles in here and the oil level's been lowered down to the center of the crank. It has a tube on the bottom here on this fitting. Right there, it uh, goes to the sump and keeps this oil level low here. 
So I'm pleased to say that these all work in my three bikes perfectly. Not one drip of oil goes past here. Nothing at any RPM. The oil tank breathes into here. That's that hole. The oil tank pees in a little bit of oil. That's when you know the oil tank level is exactly correct when you see a little bit of oil peeing back there. Keeps this clean. Works perfectly. As you can see, not one drip of oil, just dust on all of my motors. I always chew up my heads. I always use copper head gaskets. This stainless line here is inexpensive. Teflon with stainless sheathing for the uh, pressure line up to the top end. And these simple uh, clips that you crimp. This is very inexpensive. I recommend this stuff here. Yes, to be sized perfectly to the factory fitting. Now they sell kits for this stainless, same stainless line with these huge fittings. I don't appreciate those. So this motor, single squish, D-shaped, Harley style, Porsche design, combustion chamber. Cleaned up ports, not hogged out. Combat cam, 100% more oil past the lifters and cam, and an oil filter before the oil goes into the crank. What more could a guy want for a Norton? Nice. Not too far out there. Now the tranny's kind of trick. If you look in there, you will see a thinned transmission housing. Check it out. See those two huge ribs at the back of the tranny? This is a reinforced quaffed gearbox. So it has huge bearing boss castings and these two external ribs cast on it. Nice. I was um, lucky enough to find this. I got it for helping a friend sell his John Players Norton, one of my best customers, and it was a basket, so I said, I'll take that case. They're worth about $500. I should have put it on my tailpiece bike. Now you see this cage here, is full of holes that I put in to lighten it down and that makes it weaker you betcha check those huge ones here one there and one there now if you look in there you'll see some dust there's a a box sectional plate welded to both sides of the cage so the cage is box sectional there plus on the bottom here is a huge cross member of square tubing you see it there that square tubing welded to each side of the cage so the cage has got this huge cross member welding both sides together I don't expect this cage to be flexing or breaking at any time so trick tranny casing nice it's got the later stronger lay shaft with no oil grooves in it that's how it should have been. They must have been drinking warm beer from a, a Lucas fridge in 1930. So it's got the later stronger lay shaft. No oil grooves cut in it. Just 90 degree radius on the corners. Like it's supposed to be. Didn't you go to machine shops in high school? Anyway, moving right along. That covers the motor and tranny. Now. Let's look at this tank here. Roadster tank, steel, been cut out here to fit the seat in like it's fitted. And it's been cut out here. So you have a oil cap for your uh, oil tank there. That's where that is cut out for. Uh, the fenders, these are aluminum front and back. Wassel fenders, rare six inch on the rear here. This is a laminated fender, it's double wall. So underneath here I built a fender-like second uh, structure, which is aluminum to this. Comes right to here, right to the tail light mount, attached to there. Double wall right down to here. Though you can't see it underneath there. And then it's filled with silicone. And I always undercoat my fenders. Filled with silicone, which uh, makes it uh, glued together. Both pieces like a laminated situation. 
and then my brackets and the nuts underneath as usual. So that's, if you're going to build a fender, mount it to your swing arm like this and it bounces up and down with your swing arm, you've got to really pay, pay attention to where you mount this bracket on the fender. You have to spread out the stress, otherwise this thing will put a crack in your fender. Even on old vintage bikes that used to break fenders there. But not often because they use some heavy, heavy gauge fenders with a huge wall thickness on them. Okay, so front fender, it's not um, double wall, it's just single. Front fenders don't fall apart. And that's an aluminum wassail fender there with my usual mud flap because you know these bikes are worth keeping clean. So moving along to the frame, we have the oil tank in the frame, which we're going to look at soon. So let's, let's just take a look at this cross member here in the front. There's a cross member here lower down, overkill. We've got a cross member here. We've got a triangulated swing arm. Okay, well how this is done is with handlebars. Handlebar 14 gauge tubing. And that's where I'm getting my curves from here. Now this thing is overbuilt. You see this connecting tube here? It makes this so strong, it's ridiculous. When you do this to your swing arm, you gotta make sure your swing arm is true to start with. And you have to check it as you go through the procedure, tacking it together and making sure that it stays true as you weld it. Because once this is welded, you need to press and then jig this to, to, to true it up. I know, I've been there. Here's the two tubes at the front that go up and join up to the swing arm. And the trick is, the axle, perpendicular to the axle, has to be exactly parallel with the swing arm pivot. At the front of here, the swing arm pivot and those axle slots have to be exactly parallel to each other after you finish welding this up. So if you're going to do this swing arm trick, be prepared. You better know what you're doing or you're going to screw up. Nothing that a huge press won't fix. What do we got here? Rare air assist shocks from the 70s. 30 pounds, no less than 20 pounds, please. Very nice. This fender styling here from a 1933 Norton, they use this curved bracketing here. That's what I use on all my rear fender brackets. So, the forks are Norton. Steering yokes that have been machined out to accept the Ninja fork tubes, which I have shown in a, one of my other videos how I did that. So we have my usual styling, the uh, chrome yokes, the black triple trees, black headlight, triple trouble uh, fork bellows, and the black sliders. Painted fender, trick bracket with the bolts underneath, and rounded there, and uh, the pinch bolt using to mount the bracket. So, this is an oil tank in the frame. We're gonna take a look at that. But first, let's look at these wheels. Ninja wheels. How did I mount these? What has to be done to mount Ninja wheels to a Norton? As I mentioned, the yokes have to be machined out and these headlight brackets opened up as I've shown in the other video. These Ninja wheels had to be spun on my lathe to take a tenth of an inch off of this face where the disc goes on. So a tenth of an inch was taken off the hub here on each side. Disc narrowed in. Tenth of an inch taken off the fork spacers to bring the sliders in to where the discs are now because this relationship here has to stay the same of course. I did this on my lathe with a five inch swing. Figure that one out. That's the truth. The 16 inch wheels on my lathe machine those hubs perfectly. How in the hell did I do that? Only at Redline. 
So moving right along, the rear wheel, you got to squeeze all the Ninja into the narrow Norton swing arm. Same as the other bikes. The trick is the cush drive hub. The cush drive hub here where the face of the sprocket kisses up against when you bolt the sprocket on. This uh, bearing boss here, the bearing has to be moved to the center. This face has to be taken down, so this sprocket where it bolts on, that has to be taken down to move the sprocket to the center. You're going to end up with the same clearance factory had between the frame plate on the swing arm here and the sprocket face. The same with the factory hat is what your objective is. Now while you're doing all that, you also must include moving the center of the wheel on center to the frame. There's no spokes to adjust that here on your cast wheel, and that's where it gets tricky. Those other bikes were easy. This is very tricky. I had to extend the bearing boss with a steel sleeve because the aluminum didn't offer enough material for the bearing boss when I moved this bearing towards the center to get this wheel over. Now I might have cheated and widened this swing arm by an eighth of an inch on each side and then retweak the plates so they're parallel. Got your Triumph chain guard here as usual. So, over here, it's easier, same as the other bikes. This relationship doesn't change because this relationship here does not change. So this spacer stays the same. If you need to adjust anything on this side, you take it off your caliper mount here, off the face of this, or add a washer to it. And there's your Ninja wheel. These are the most difficult to do. I would suggest don't do Ninja wheels. The KZ. I think looked the best with the straight spokes. These were a snap. These were a snap. No spacers, no machining. They're ex uh, exactly the same as a Norton. The center to center on the yoke. Don't quote me, check your measurements. But I advise, don't do the Ninja. Okay, I think we covered this all. Oh, except for the CB lens, another concave CB lens collector item. Looks like something from the 20s. The chrome is mint halogen light that is so bright you wouldn't say wow. And the usual hog clutch lever seems to be my favorite. Uh, tack only and the usual Norton Lockheed Reservoir modified, modified in the red line way. And uh, alloy throttle with the horn button in it. That's what the H is reminding me. So let's take a look at this frame. Let's drain the gas out of this bike. Baby rides like a caddy. Her sister over there is more like a Ferrari. Okay, should be ready to remove here. Don't want any slipsies. Alrighty, there we go. Just tank here and get the brain happening. Now let's take a look at this tank. This oil tank in the frame. Any leaks? Any drooling? Well, that decal's pretty clean. If there was oil leaks, we would see it on that decal if it's coming from the cap. And I don't see anything. Sweet. It's the way we like it. Now, you see what I do here? cut the frame along here the big tube gets cut right down the middle and then the tube that's under there that smaller tube Norton uses and this half of the frame taken out and then I make up a box sectional u-shaped thing of uh, sheet metal 18 gauge fits up here uh, then it gets welded up all the way around you put your uh, factory tank mounts back on and here at the front is that cross member that goes up to the oil tank. You can see it traveling up and welding onto the oil tank there. And you can't quite see it because the horn's in the way here. But there's that cross member which it attaches to. So, that's a very strong neck. The neck is extended from here. And the neck actually starts here. 
And then down here we have a cross member also overkill. And down here is another cross member with the side to side extra motor mount, same as on the top. Side to side exhaust grommet, same as the top motor mount. If your Norton doesn't have your top motor mount and these in mint shape, your Norton will handle like an elastic band. Doubling up on these makes it more secure, does not add any vibration compromising at all. Excellent plan, cross member, and you see those tangs hooked on to the cage and the grommets. Same as the top motor mount right there with the two side to side grommets in there. Stainless motor mount appears to be bolted onto the bottom of the oil tank here. So, this frame, you see where it gets cut off there? This is factory. This tube is all factory here. You leave that. This is some of my work I put in here. These aluminum side covers are made by using pieces of angle iron. One half by one half angle aluminum, which you lay out on a piece of aluminum sheet metal, 14 gauge. After you cut them out to the exact shape, it's all aluminum together on the back. On the back here, I put some open paths and I aluminum them all together and then aluminum around the edge. The entire perimeter gets aluminum so it looks one piece and mint, as you can see. Can you tell those are individual pieces of angle iron, angle aluminum? I don't think so. And guess what? You can do that too. Sandblast them, polish the fin, boom, fin side covers. These little triangular plates here, this is some of my handiwork once again. Polished aluminum, you um, polish aluminum, mask it off, blast the center, and then you get that two-tone look. The polished side and the sandblasting in the middle. To give it that look. So this frame extended to fit the Harley seat pattern. If you're going to chop your frame, leave the stock shock brackets on like sister has here. These are the stock shock position. That's the best position you want. And use 13 and a quarter inch eye to eye shocks. That's the Norton proper Norton length. So, if you can see under here, we have the rectifier, the cow reservoir, here's the uh, brake fluid reservoir, cow master cylinder, I meant to say, of course. Here's your battery box. Here's all your wiring right in front of your face. Back of there, cleaner there, polished aluminum. Very simple, easier than a factory Norton. A factory Norton is a kind of annoying. When you try to look for something, it's like, where is it? And you have to bend your head and contort and take all this stuff apart. You just pull the seat off, two bolts, the shock bolts and the seats off and everything. You can see it all here, very easy. Same as on the sister, identical. Only a sister is easier, just wing bolts under there. Anyway, there we go. So let's put the tank uh, back on, but first I'm going to drain the gas out of it. Put the tank back on and put this bike to sleep for six months. Alrighty. Let's drain that tank. Okay, the gasoline is draining. So let's take one more look at this frame. And how it's cut down. Same as my other bike there, it's sister, similar cut down, cut off there. Similar to my tailpiece bike here, the same as this. This is what the frame used to look like here. So this entire huge tube here, these tubes all the way around the back there, all that is cut off under here. Right you know, we come up with the angle of this frame tube is left behind. There you go, there's there. Cut off on that angle. So all this is taken off. 
leave these shock holes where they are because the stock position is a good position which I have on this bike here the stock position on the shocks and I can show a frame that I just started on earlier this year a project I didn't intend to do this frame uh, was from a customer who owed me a frame and the way I got it someone had already chopped it what they had done is cut a couple inches out of the back tubes here and then the big tube that used to come way out here they they had heated it up here and then crudely bent it down and re-welded it so this big tube crudely bent just the factory Norton horrible the, one of the worst efforts at customizing a motorcycle I've ever seen someone with a huge ego and not many brains to go with it so I had no choice but well I guess I'm doing another project I just bought these hoops from Jim Bush 14 gauge one inch and that's what I'll be redoing this frame with so this is going to be like my tailpiece bike only it's going to have two seats and it will have the stock shock mounts also factory position on the shocks so the frame gets cut off like wow like that you leave these on and leave your shock mounts on and then you need the rear hoop gets cut to put to fill in here so it curves back up and you weld on to your uh, frame bits you left on so that's basically how that's done now I am not doing an oil tank in the frame uh, funny thing about this frame is though it was butchered by this previous owner so before you hating on me for cutting up another Norton frame I'm taking it back from the dead trust me this frame is very unusual because this front half is perfectly true seven out of ten Norton are twisted at the neck here this is the weakest frame ever out of England for a motorcycle a British motorcycle maybe other than some little moped so this one I've checked with my alignment shaft perfectly true all these tubes perfectly to put a straight edge on that steering lug hardly worn down there the front half of this is mint very nice way to start a project when you're doing like this this won't be a bobber it's going to be like my tailpiece I'm going to build a similar tailpiece only there's going to be dual seat situation there so the oil tank not going into the frame this will be all left stock the oil tank will go down here triangle oil tank finned chromed I've done it before in 1980 on an electric start and uh, it sits on like a battery box platform here with two exhaust grommets and then at the top the, the oil tank mount at the top is the breather hose three-quarter inch ID huge breather hose hooking up to a piece of pipe that's welded to the frame three-quarter inch and then rubber hose running up to a filler here so this attachment at the top this hose acts as the mount for the oil tank the breather for the oil tank plus the filler hose when you fill up the oil tank you do it here runs down boom a level line on the outside thinned chrome oil tank that is the plan so anybody interested would you like to build this with me give me a call or if you're a Triumph guy, check this out. Custom made girders that my friend copied my 1928 BSA girders 40 years ago onto a Triumph frame, which I will make a rigid rear section for, which I've done countless in my chopper days. But building a speed twin would be very difficult. Building a unit construction Triumph 650 engine with a unit construction triumph frame with a rigid a lot easier with these girders so i'm building a 37 triumph 500 speed twin replica 
maroon red everywhere. Check one out. Beautiful. That's what I'm going to do here. Anybody interested? Give me a call. So yes, let's drain the fuel out of the tank. Lube the taps after you drain the fuel. Put it back on. Oh, I got to take the drain plugs out of the carbs. Let them drain for a couple days. With the throttle, full throttle, thank you. Though I have no throttle clutch knob on this thing. There is a horn button here though, inside the alloy throttle. Isn't that nice? Yes, I love this bike. It is, I, I, I wish all I had to do was ride motorcycles. Maybe in my older age, maybe that's all I'll do. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. We'll talk soon.